Detective, starring Brady Woodrow, Kylie DiMaggio, Brooke Glansman, Austin Riley, Riley Shields, Gary Granado, and Logan Steen as Hercule Poirot in The Case of the Careless Victim. Monsieur? Huh? Is this a cause of room renting apartment things we see? Uh, well, we got something to rent, yeah. Ah, la, yes, I uh, With the rent in the apartment? Uh, who has it? Ah, uh, do not justice me. Uh, I believe I have sent my dossier. I left it for you to read. Oh, oh, all right. Please read it. Uh, gentleman desires a bright, sunshine, sunshiny apartment of a reasonable quietness near the heart of the city. Should be furnished with utmost charm, French provincial if possible, Price is of no consequence as long as it is very reasonable. Uh, uh, please communicate with me at the Hotel Windsor, Hercules, P O I R O T, Poirot. No, 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 Monsieur. The name is Poirot. Hercule Poirot. Uh, well, I wish you luck, Mr. Poirot. Finding an apartment is not a matter of luck, Monsieur. It is a matter of employing the little gray cells. If you can find an apartment for me, please do me the kindness to inform me. Sure, you'll do something for me. And what is that? If you can find an apartment for me, please do the kindness to inform me. Apologies, madame. Not at all. It's just entirely my fault. Uh, mademoiselle, you father, perhaps I may be of some assistance. No, I, well, if you're sure you don't mind. But of course not. You see, it's my door. It won't open. And uh, where is this obstinate door? Right down the corridor, room 515. Uh, if I may have the key. But that's just it. The door isn't locked. I left it open not even ten minutes ago. Mm, indeed, madame is very... Plastic. Mm. Well, here we are. You see, it's stuck. It won't budge. Uh, it's not quite stuck, madame. It gives a pleasure. The doll is barricaded. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and the uh, trunk. Ah, voila. She opens it. Thanks a million. Now, what do you suppose? Uh, wait, mademoiselle. Uh, perhaps it is better if I take a look first, eh? It is as I say feared. What is it? Uh, you do not know? Look! <gasps> it's a man! Is he. is he. Oui, madame. He has been strangled. This is murder. Now, if you'll get this uh, corpse out of here, I'd like to sit down. 
Ay, mas kaya tayo kaya natin na naman sa'yo. So, dahil mas ka, mas nakitouch kung sa police ako ay. Police! But of course, I'm calling them now. Hello? Hello? Ah, Inspector Stevens! It is I, Akio Poirot! Uh, no, uh, alas, I have not yet found an apartment, but I have found something of perhaps more curiosity. Uh, a corpse right here in my hotel, room number... 515. Room number five. It's Mademoiselle! What are you doing with the body? Nothing. I'm just trying to see his face. You will have time for that later. Uh, pardon, Inspector. Uh, room 515. Bien. Uh, we will expect you immediately. Uh, bien, Miss Flasher. Now that you have seen the face of this most unfortunate one, perhaps you can tell me who he is? I most certainly will not. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Hercule Poirot, formerly chief of the Belgian Sarek. Yeah, that's what you say. Now look here, Mr. Poirot. I've read my fair share of detective novels, and none of them had anyone that looks anything like you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll let the police get here and let them ask the questions. Very good, mademoiselle. But let me finish the point about one thing to you. It is you the question, the police will question fast. Me? But of course, you're the most likely suspect, no? Well, all right, what do you want to know? Fast, what are you doing here? Well, I've lived here ten solid years ever since I left Waskoskego, Maine. Uh, what do you do? What is your occupation? Well, well, I don't have an occupation. I've got a little income, and I like it here in New York. And the past few years I've been doing war work. Red Cross and things like that. You seem a trifle vague. Uh, now about this man, who is he? I don't know. I've never seen him before in my life. Mademoiselle, you must <laughs> you must consider the answers with care. May I remind you that a man lies dead in your room? I can't know that. I don't know who he is or how he got here. I told you I was gone for ten minutes. Uh, that may be, Mademoiselle, but it does not help you, for this man has been dead for over an hour. If you will touch the body, you will observe it beginning to cool. And if you left only ten minutes ago, your situation is indeed grave, for this man has been already dead. I'm sorry, it's okay. Fortunately, so you deal with Hercule Poirot, who goes one step beyond the obvious. You see, this man was not murdered in your room, he was murdered in the room overhead. But why? Why kill him upstairs and leave him on my doorway? That we shall discover and do cross. And what do I see? Everywhere, the dust reposes peacefully. Well, naturally, the help is too busy to polish fire escapes. Ah, uh, yes, but on one pass, the one leading up from your window, all is disarranged. There is a broad, clear path through the dust, uh, precisely the width of a human body. And since it only extends to the floor above, I know the body has been dragged down from room 615. Also, on the corpse of the garment, across the trousers, the shoulders, and the left elbow, there is an unmistakable trace of rust. Ah, voila, the elevator, she arrives. Going down. Uh, Mademoiselle, could you be so kind to explain what took you so long in arriving? Uh, it, it, it's an old car. Um, goes on the front sometimes. 
Got my undeath blitz. Uh, out of order. Yeah, I got stuck up on the ninth. You have been on the ninth floor this time. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that is hard to believe. Why? Because the indicator is pointed to the basement. Ah, uh, that indicator. As soon as anything goes wrong around here, it flops. I do not believe that to be true of the indicator, but true of the two clever murder. When anything goes wrong, it flops. Situation. A man strangled to death in one room and dragged down the fire and escaped to another. Poirot, if this body is the person I think it is, the commissioner will have my head. Uh, pardon, madame, you seem agitated. And we were warned, too. I assign my best man to guard him, the smartest cop on the force, Sam Trimble. Good lord, Poirot, there'll be an international scandal. Uh, excuse me, madame, who is that figure of international importance? The Parish, Jonathan Parrish. Parrish. Ah, Barish, oui, the name rings a bell. Uh, number five. Uh, he is a big financial expert, eh? Exactly. He's supposed to fly to Europe to get the new paper currency for the liberated countries. Checked in at the Windsor today, was supposed to pick up some papers, dyes, and inks, and hop on Obama tonight. Uh, a great undertaking in one of Eugene Barber's. And I was responsible for his safety. He's an, he's an eccentric sort of guy. No photographs, no publicity. Trumbull was the only man who knew him at all, and Trumbull failed. Do you see what this means, Poirot? I assume he's this, my friend. We've arrived as the first step in the... Please follow me. We have arrived as the first step in the solution of this distressing murder. Who now who knows the motive? Uh, here we are. Oh, let this down. <laughs> uh, you exaggerate, mon ami. Even the greatest of men fail. Regard, Inspector. Use your gobs. Well, hmm. they certainly did a number on Thunderation! You are surprised. Poirot, do you realize what's happened? But of course, it is not just in Paris who has been murdered, but your own faithful policeman, Sam Tremble. The other's a policeman. When employing the little gray cells, it is not too hard to figure out the man's a large high shoes and the plain suit is a policeman. You're right. I'm, I'm sorry. There is no time for profuse apologies. You're right. We've got to get to Parrish at once. He doesn't even realize his body on top. Hello? Hello, operator. What room is Jonathan Parrish in? Uh, 615? Hold on. Poirot, that's the room directly above this one, where Tremble was killed. Precisely. Uh, operator, let me talk to Parrish. I think that you will find the gentleman does not answer. Why not? Well, obviously, no one would go without reporting a matter. Of course, he too may... Good Lord, Poirot, do you think he'll be dead too? He... We know we received a warning from Hillary Kent. Uh, pardon, I do not follow. Uh, oh, uh, I'm surprised. He's a, uh, criminal egomaniac. Ah, one who commits crime chiefly shows the pleasure of baffling the police, eh? Exactly. 
Well, this Hillary Kent, or someone who calls himself Hillary Kent, is one of those guys. He's pulled off a few clever jobs and got away with them. No one really knows who he is, but whoever he is, he's got to get his thrill out of every job. So he makes it a rule to warn his victims. Uh, me, I know where is the type, and uh, Monsieur Parrish, I take it as receive such a warning? Exactly. Now you see why I assign my best man. Ah, uh, Bjorn, uh, inspector, but now we must hasten upstairs. Already it may be too late. Uh, I'll go too. I don't want to stay here with this body. You'll stay right there, Miss Fletcher, until I give you permission. Uh, excuse me, inspector. Uh, I am not particularly adverse to Miss Fletcher's company. If you do not mind, I find her very intriguing. I did not expect the murderer to sit and wait for us, did you? You must employ the basket. Now, Miss Fletcher, you're not to touch anyone. Oh, it's perfectly all right. I'm wearing gloves. Ah, uh, Inspector, I've seen no fingerprints. Why, I do not think you will find any. Hillary Kent or whoever the killer may be is too clever to leave any such traces. That may be true, but I don't want to even lose the tiniest clue. Ah, beyond Inspector, good approach. We'll find many interesting things about Parrish while we are here. Well, he certainly gets around a lot. Oh, oui, the labels on his luggage are from the four corners of the air. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Fletcher, I told you not to touch anything. For goodness sakes, it's only a book. Ah, but books may be of great significance. This one, for example, it is a priceless stamp album. Well, it's, huh, well, it's stamps, almost. Perfect. Everything in its place, except for this, the Guatemala blue. Put your hands up! Oh yeah! Don't move! I said don't move! Ah, uh, sir, we will not dispute the authority of your gun. Mister, you can't get away with this. Put your gun down and talk fast. Who the devil are you? Ah, uh, Inspector, I think you will find this. This is the man we are looking for. He's young as in Paris. That's just who I am. Or I speak up. Which one of you is Hillary Kane? Hillary Kane? Yeah! Now, Mr. Parrish, you've got this all wrong. I'm Inspector Stevens, Homicide School. This here is Hercule Poirot, the famous Belgian detective. So you say? You don't want to look like policemen to me, especially the squirt with the stupid mustache. Hey! You just stay right there until I check on you. Now that you are satisfied as to our identities. Well, I've heard of you, of course. You're supposed to be the greatest French detective in the world. Ah, uh, always people say that about me, but it is not entirely true. I am not French, I am Belgian. <laughs> huh. Well, I wish you'd all get out of here. Leave me alone! But I'm expecting my daughter. I don't want her walking into a room full of policemen. But, but Monsieur, you are in great danger. You must be protected at every moment. You. Giving me police protection. <laughs> not with a hoot. I beg that's what I say. Not with a hoot. I already have a detective, some person they assigned me to. Well, where is he? He is dead. What? Died in this very room while protecting. So if you do not object too violently, I shall conduct question until you step up onto a half lane. Alright, alright, stay. Shouldn't be much longer anyways, I'm just expecting one more parcel to be delivered then I'm off. Uh, Monsieur is taking with him much equipment. Yeah, quite a load. Uh, most of it should actually fill up the laundry box over there. Uh, oh. Yes! Don't eat that chocolate. It may be poisoned. Don't be perfect. Don't be silly. This candy isn't poisoned. 
I wouldn't be too sure. <laughs> Supposedly it came from my daughter Lara. It was actually delivered here a few minutes ago. I, you think she did not send it? Well, she's supposed to come and see me. She's actually supposed to be here right now, in fact, so why would she send it? You are very shrewd, mon ami. Hey, Mr. Oh, I, uh, I, uh, excuse me, I'll go. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Jenny. Come back, come back. What do you want? N not nothing. I just wanted to make sure Mr. Parrish got his extra laundry box okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I received it. All right, then. Excuse me. I uh, just picked up a few last-minute things, you know, special dyes and inks. It actually should fill up the rest of that laundry box I got. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go and finish packing. Crusty old bird, ain't he? Well, how would you be if you knew someone was out to get you? Uh, that explains it, son. He is irritable and nervous. What does that mean? Uh, it explains why he wears upon his legs a particular pair of socks, one which is green and the other brown. Well, if the man wants to be eccentric, let him be. I've still got a murderer to catch. You two want to come along? I'm sorry, Inspector. I have attached myself to Monsieur Parish. Mm. Uh, come in. Inspector, one of the men found this on the sidewalk outside the hotel. Oh. Thought you might want to take a look at it before turning into the lost and found. Right, Brady. Thanks. Uh, looks like a women's purse. Uh, Usual assortment of stuff. Uh, purse, uh, itself, change, keys, perfume. What do you make of it, Paul Rowe? Uh, mm. uh, Sacre bleu! What is it? Uh, these initials, LB. Monsieur uh, Parish! Yeah, what did you say is the name of your charming daughter was? Uh, Laura. <gasps> LB! Laura Parrish! <sighs> hey, Paul where are you going? I have a little idea. Miss Fletcher, please do accompany me. What about Mr. Parrish? You were so attached to him. I have momentarily become detached from him. I leave him in your care. Uh, protect him with the apple of your eye, Miss Fletcher. Anyways, eh? Find him. Uh, 
that is not in patent now. Uh, we have found her, but we have seem to have lost the father. Oh, right, Laura, I'm so sorry. Your father's terribly upset about you, but his package was delivered and he had to rush off to the airport. Oh, no, don't tell me I miss him after all this. Ah, uh, Benedicte, you have been <laughs> neglected, eh? Uh, Miss Lesher, your room should be free of corpses. Please take Miss Carriage downstairs and extend her as a first aid. Come along, Laura. Thank you. Inspector Stevens, I hope you do not later have cause to regret that you left Mr. Parrish unguarded. Oh, he'll be all right. Besides, I've still got my own job to do here, though. Frankly, I'm in a complete fog. I can't make head and tail of any of this business. Uh, no, Inspector. The heads and the tail we have. What? Yes, it is only a matter of fragment of the metal we still lack. Well, who is it then? Hey, where are you going? Ah, uh, uh, to check on Miss Parrish. Also to uh, phone the airport to see that Mr. Parrish is well taken care of. Uh, au revoir. <laughs> Uh, but you have. I beg your pardon? 
the case. It is cracked right open. Inspector, uh, meet the man Hillary Kent, to whom you have just wished bon voyage. What? Hillary Kent? You met a parole? Good gracious, I thought he was married. Uh, is that wooden crate? Which I have waited so long to see. It's touched. Why not? Because that is what contains the body of Jonathan Parrish. The planes above circling about give you the feeling of flying, no? Ugh, this feeling I've got, if this is what flying gives you, keep me from it. Ah, uh, Miss Fletcher, do not worry. I too do not like matter. Ah, uh, Inspector Stevens, is everything taken care of? Oh uh, yeah, they're taking away Kent now. Ah, uh, then perhaps you will join us for some supper. Ah, uh, no, I, uh, I actually just came by to ask a couple of questions. Uh, for example? Uh, when did you discover that Kent was impersonating Parrish? Uh, almost immediately. We enter the room of Messier Parrish, and what do we find? An amazing paradox. On one hand, we have a man who is an ardent stamp collector, his album in perfect order, every stamp, every shade of stamp in its proper place, except for one, the Guatemalan blue, reposing among the American Swiss and stamps. And later, when we uh, see Messier Parrish, and he's wearing one sock that is brown, and the other, which is green, I am sure. The man's room is colorblind. And therefore not perish the stamp uh, No, no, no. More importantly, not perish the, uh, the currency expert. The man who's to, who is to choose the shades and the colors for the new paper currency. And if the man's room is not perish, who is he? Well, obviously he'll be Kent. Well, then why didn't you arrest him right away? One cannot prove him that there was not a body, and I was sure Monsieur Kent would lead us to it. But then... You weren't guarding him, you were watching him. Precisely. Well, you weren't so smart. When you weren't watching, you could have gotten away on that plane. Uh, but of course not. I, when I called the airport, it was to make sure that the plane would not leave without my word. You know everything, don't you? Some things are obvious. We can suppose that Hillary Kent discovers the nature of the Mitchell uh, Monsieur Parrish is on. He goes to Parrish. Moves Parish, flies to Europe as Parish, takes uh, the papers, the formulas, and the dies, and turns them into the proper authorities, and then, at the moment, just reaps a huge counterfeit currency. You understand what I am saying. John McCarthy, the man must be mad! Uh, perhaps, but he's also a genius, eh? He finds out where Parish is staying at the Hotel Windsor in the 1615. He knocks on the door, Parish admits him, and at once he is strangled to death. Ah, but the bodies, that must be put uh, somewhere where it would not be found. Uh, so there's only one thing to do then. Hide it in the packing crate, which is exactly in the room, and take the body to here. Hold on, then you were just guessing where the body was. Uh, no, 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 Inspector. So it was proof in the room. You remember when Mr. Parrish was packing his stuff in that box? He says, these are some new dyes and inks that I've just bought. He says, for us, which I have only now just purchased. Obviously, that is a lie. On such a mission, one does not purchase supplies at the very last minute. <coughs> Therefore, I know the inks and the dyes have been removed some, from a, some other crater box to make room for the body. Gracious, it's as plain as the nose on my face. Uh, what about Laura Parrish? Oh, I got that. She calls up and goes, Pa, I'm coming over. Well, he can't have that, otherwise the jig is up. So he goes into an alleyway and eliminates him. Right, girl? Precisely. As for poor Sam Tremble, he is, he knows Parrish, he has been with him. So when he knocks on the door and Kent comes up, Kent kills him, because he's asking too many questions. <laughs> uh, that being said, there is 
nowhere to put the body, so he drags him down the fire escape to Miss Fletcher's room. That was his first mistake. He never should have started up with me. <laughs> oh, oh, I think that's the ward wire pulling up. Mademoiselle Fletcher, may I ask you some questions of a personal nature? Fire away. Uh, you are not right now engaged in a business enterprise, are you? No. And you are good with your short hand in the typewriter? What? Well, yes. Ah, uh, bon. Miss Fletcher, I find you very intelligent and amusing. A very fair combination. And I am also in need of a secretary. Why, Mr. Perot? Ah, but you do not employ the little pesos as to the, uh, the best benefit. So if you are not that vast. <laughs> Mr. Perot, for years I've been devouring detective stories and you ask me if I'm interested? Chief, you've got yourself a secretary. <laughs> uh, well, that about winds up the case. They're taken away Kent now. That, not exactly. Uh, Monsieur Kent, uh, did he reside anywhere? Uh, yeah, we got a lease on for him in Gramercy Park. And that is a good neighborhood. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Swell, right in the heart of the city. Uh, why do you ask? I do not think Monsieur Kent will be using that apartment for quite a time. But you see, I have need for it. It is like I have said, uh, in New York, it is not a matter of luck to find an apartment. You only need to solve to Mertas. Thank you.